They say that the live is on. We're going to make sure. We're going to wait a moment. Just make sure the live is actually on. As soon as I see some human activity in here, then I'll know it's live. I'll make sure we get Facebook started. I got to start the IG first because this, this, for whatever reason, the IG be messing up. The IG be acting up. But it looks like it is actually live. So we start the Facebook live, which never fails. Facebook is live. We are activated. It is time for those of y'all who don't know. It is 5.15 p.m. Eastern. That's the time that I go live every day. If you didn't know, uh, consider yourself no longer ignorant of the fact that I go live every day at 5.15. Here we are. Here you are. No matter where you go, there you are. And we about to get started in a moment. What's good, California? As y'all checking in, go ahead, shout yourself out in the comment section. If you on Facebook, uh, you can leave a comment, shout yourself out. You can uh, share this to your timeline so somebody on your timeline can see it, even if you're watching the replay. And... You can, what's the other thing? Oh yeah, hit the like button on Facebook. Hit that like. We need, we need that engagement. Facebook likes engagement. Ireland is checking in. What's good, everybody who is coming in? Hope everybody's had a great week. Uh, we're going to close out this week right. It might still be afternoon for some of y'all, depending on where you are. It might be the next day, depending on where you're checking in from. But we're going to get into this material in a moment. I ain't going to wait. I ain't going to take too much time waiting for people to come in because, like I always say, to be early is to be on time. To be on time is to be late and to be late. You won't even know those people because they are forgotten. And if you don't know that, that saying, then you'll understand it. I did a whole master class actually on exactly that, why I always say that, why it matters to be early. I did a master class on that. You get access to that right here, Work On Your Game University. And yes, my name is Drake Baldwin. I am Professor Emeritus. I'm the, the Dean of Students. I'm the, I'm the everything. No, I'm not the everything, but I'm the Dean of Students at the Work On Your Game University, for those who don't know. I'm a former nine-year professional athlete, author of 26 books, book number 27. I'm looking at the preview right here on my computer. I can't show it to you, but it's on my laptop is right here next to me, so y'all don't think I'm lying. My laptop's right here next to me. I'm looking at the preview of how this is going to print out. We just want to make sure that the print is set up properly you know, before we order physical copies and all that. But book number 27 is coming soon. I've done four TED Talks. I've published over 15,000 pieces of content. Some of those are on video on YouTube. Many of them are in article format and a bunch of them in podcast format. I've done over a thousand of these live streams, probably closer to 2,000 live streams. All of it is under the platform and this brand, this business that I created that is called Work On Your Game. It's about taking a pro athlete mindset and teaching you how to apply that mentality. Is my live still on here? All right. And teaching how to apply that mentality in your business, your sport, and your life. It's one of my books. It's called Work On Your Game. I'll tell you about that later on. I got it sitting right here, but I'll tell you about this later on get to it but the topic here and working games for three specific type of people people who need more game who need more performance and people who want to get seen more for what you do so if any one of those three things is your need you're in the right place at the right time with the right person and we're going to get into it right now the topic here today is failure leaves clues volume one all right this is not even the last volume i had to split this up into two volumes because there are some specific clues that people leave when they fail in life i'm going to go over what those clues are that failures leave so that you could check yourself and make sure you're not making these mistakes. You probably heard the saying that success leaves clues. This one, and what that means is when people are successful in life, there are certain principles, there are certain frameworks that they apply that no matter what they're succeeding at, they are applying these same principles. These are certain rules that will apply to anything you do that will create success. So what I'm doing is the exact opposite of that. I'm going to do failure leaves clues because there are certain things that when people fail in life, when they come up short and they don't get the outcomes that they want, there are specific things that they are doing or not doing that is creating their failure that you will see the similarities. They will repeat themselves over and over again in all kinds of failures. Well, somebody fails at school, if they fail in a relationship, if you fail in business, if you fail playing a sport, if you fail doing communication, anything that you fail at in life, there are certain similar things that happen over and over and over again when people come up short in life i'm gonna go over those in today and tomorrow's lives part one today and tomorrow i'm gonna do part two failure leaves clues they say success leaves clues understand that failure leaves clues as well and i want you to understand that this is not a conclusive list i'm not telling you everything that you're going to see find in common when people fail because there are hundreds of things that can lead people to failure but i'm going to give you four specific things that i know especially when it comes to the work on your game philosophy that leads to people failing in life. So if you don't want to fail, if you aim at succeeding in life, all you need to do is listen to everything I'm going to talk about here today, 
First of all, check yourself to make sure you're not committing these errors against success, these crimes against success. Make sure you're not committing them. And then secondly, make sure you're doing the exact opposite of everything that I'm laying out so that you do not fail and you actually succeed in life because I know that's what you want. Point number one, number one thing that leads to failure in life, number one clue of failure is a lack of discipline. Now, what is discipline? Discipline is your willingness and ability to show up every single day and do the work. And the work can be can take many different forms. Doing the work could mean paying attention to your business and not paying attention to other people's business. Doing the work could mean being early, which is on time, and not on time, which is to be late and not forgotten, which means that you might as well not even show up. Doing the work every single day could mean since you're a professional and you're getting paid for what you do, you got to deliver at a certain high level that is expected of you and make it look easy simply because you're the one who's getting paid and nobody else and everybody else is coming to watch you. So they're expecting you to deliver at a certain level and make it look easier than it actually is just because you're getting paid for it. That's part of the role of being a professional in any type of performance art, actually any kind of business. You're expected to make it look a whole lot easier than an amateur will look, than will make it look just because you're that good. That's the whole role of being a professional. That's what, do, that's what discipline means. And it happens with a lot of athletes who are otherwise talented but fail to make it to the highest level that they could make it to because of their, uh, based on their talent, is because they don't have discipline. They don't show up every day, do the work. Uh, they can't keep themselves focused on their business and doing what they're supposed to do. They allow other things that have nothing to do with their talent to derail them from whatever it is that they do best, and they end up coming up short. And the sport, you see a lot of this in the sports world simply because people see the pot of gold in the sports world, and they think, man, I'm going to go after that pot of gold. And when people had the talent to go after it, but they come up short, if you ask them, this is why I say failure leaves clues. If you find people who have failed in life who are willing to talk about it, I guarantee you, you're going to notice that one of the main things that cause people to fail is a lack of discipline. That means they have all the resources, they got all the talent, they might have the knowledge, they got all the information, they got everything set up in their favor to be successful, but because of their lack of discipline, they end up coming up short in life. So you want to make sure, if you're anything that you're failing at right now, ask yourself, check yourself, am I applying the disciplines necessary to be successful in this thing? And I'm, and I'm, wait, and am I applying them on a consistent basis. See, being disciplined means doing it, not only doing the right things, but doing the right things consistently so that you know and they know, whoever they are, they know that you're showing up and doing your job. Uh, the person in life who has the tools but doesn't take the time to learn the game, that's a discipline. Learning how to use your tools is a discipline. Showing up every day and doing the work and not just doing the work that you like doing, not just doing the work that's convenient for you, but doing all the work. It is not always fun, but it is absolutely necessary. And if you want to succeed, you must do it. And if you don't do it, that's one of the clues that you're on your way to, or on your way to failure or it may be one of the reasons why you have already failed. Point number two. Today's topic, we're talking about failure leaves clues. This is volume one. Point number two. Bad choices that go unfixed. Bad decisions. I tell you on my Hard Work Ain't Enough Masterclass, which you can access at hardworkandenough.com, the main thing that... The number one thing that people need in life, aside from hard work to be successful, is wise decision making, choosing wisely. Because see, if you work really hard at the wrong thing, it doesn't matter that you work really hard at it. For the most part, it doesn't matter because you have to choose what you're working at. There are people who come to me all the time. They tell me how hard they work, how much time they put in, how much effort they're investing into something, but they're investing their time and effort into the wrong things. So all that hard work is going for naught because you're, you're putting it towards the wrong things. So when you use energy in life, yes, using energy is important for success, but you also have to apply it to the right things. What are you working hard at? Before I started playing basketball, I tell this story in my book, Work on Your Game. I tell the story how I used to play baseball for a little while. And I kept trying that baseball and trying that baseball for a couple years. This is as a, a kid, like before I even turned 14. But I finally realized I, I just don't have any skill in baseball. I don't really like baseball. I was okay at it because it was sports, but I didn't really like baseball like that. I wasn't passionate about it. I had chosen the wrong thing. And when I took that same energy and that same attention that I've been putting into baseball and start putting it into basketball, I started getting different results eventually over time. That's because I chose, I made a different choice. Sometimes in life, you are doing all the right things, but you are applying them to the wrong area. You made the wrong choice in how you're applying it, and then you got the wrong outcome. If any of you saw the movie Blow with George Jung, who was the biggest cocaine dealer in the United States, he's the one who helped, according to legend, introduce cocaine to the United States. He was in jail 
for when he was selling weed. His first drug of choice to sell was marijuana. He was selling all this marijuana. He got arrested trying to cross state lines with like 600 pounds of marijuana. And he thought he was a big time drug dealer because he had 600 pounds of marijuana. But when he was in prison, his cellmate asked him, hey, well, his cellmate found out he overheard George talking about, hey, I got arrested selling marijuana. And his cellmate said, George, the reason why you're in prison right now is not because you sell drugs, it's because you're selling the wrong drug. If you want to sell drugs and you might lose your life or you might go to jail, you might as well sell the right drug. How about you start selling cocaine? And then George starts selling cocaine and he starts making 100 times more money. And y'all can watch the movie if you want to learn more about that. The movie is called Blow, in case y'all didn't know. It's Johnny Depp and uh, I think of Penelope Cruz, I think, was the one who played the, the woman. But anyway, y'all, that movie came out like 20 years ago. But Choosing Wiser. Bad choices that you do not fix when you realize that you made the wrong choice in life. When you realize that you're dating the wrong girl or the wrong guy or you realize you're working at the wrong job or you run a company and you realize you hired the wrong person, you must immediately get rid of whatever in your life was the bad choice. You realize you're playing the wrong sport. It's like if you're in any town that has a train system. Right? Let's say you're in New York and you get on the train in New York and you need to go uptown. And you get on the train, you realize after a few stops, you're like, wait a minute, this train is going downtown, not uptown. What are you going to do? Are you going to sit on the train and ride it all the way to the end of, end of the, the route? Or are you going to get off the train at the next stop, go to the other side of the platform and get on the train that's going uptown? Of course, if you're, you have any amount of intelligence, you're going to get off the train that's going south and you'll get on the train that's going north. Why? Because you know you want to go north. So when you realize that you've made a bad choice in life, the most important thing you do as soon as you recognize it is you must do something about it. A lot of times in life, people make a wrong choice, realize that they made the wrong choice, and then they don't do anything. They just keep making, they just allow that wrong choice to just sit there. They don't fix their own errors, and then they, they basically double down on their mistakes, which makes no sense whatsoever. So make sure anytime you make a wrong choice in life, as soon as you realize it's the wrong choice, do something about it. Don't just sit around and wait. And just hope that things are going to change on their own because you and I both know if you just wait for things to change most of the time, at least change in your favor, things will change in general. But to change in your favor, usually they won't change at all. So do something about it. Do not be a failure who does nothing when you realize you made a bad choice. Point number three, the topic here today is failure leaves clues, volume one. I'll answer all questions at the end if anybody got any. Point number three, poor associations. This one could go hand in hand with what I just said because... If you realize that you made a bad choice in terms of your associations, in terms of your friends, in terms of your mate, in terms of your job, in terms of your career, y'all know the saying, you become the average of the people you spend the most time with, right? And it doesn't have to be five people you spend time with. You can spend the most time with two people. You can spend time with 10 people or whatever number of people you spend the most time with, you become those people. And spending time with somebody doesn't have to be somebody you know in person. You can spend time with somebody by following their Instagram or watching their YouTube videos, or listening to their audio books, or subscribing to their podcast. Listen, if you listen to somebody's audio book all day, are you spending time with that person? Absolutely. Because everything that they're saying is, getting, is going right into your ear and right into your brain. If you watch somebody's YouTube all day, or you listen to somebody's mixtape all day, everything that they're saying or everything that they're doing or showing you is going right into your subconscious all day long. So whoever you're spending time with, you are, going, you are going to become a reflection of that individual or a reflection of their message, whatever kind of message that they're giving you. So when you choose unwisely when it comes to your associations, you're listening to stuff that's not making you smarter. You're watching stuff that's burning up brain cells. You're hanging around people who ain't going nowhere, who don't have nothing going on in life, are not trying to create success. But you keep hanging around them. You realize that they're the wrong type of people, but you keep hanging with them. What are you doing? You are making bad choices when it comes to association. Again, this is a law of association. It's not a question. It's not a suggestion. It's not a rule. It is a law of association. You know what happens in America when you break the law, right? All right, you get arrested. All right, hopefully that's all you get is arrested when you break the law. So when you break the law of association, now there's a penalty to be paid. And you pay that penalty with the results of your life. So when you choose poor associations, you're around the wrong people who are not making you better based on where you want to go in life. All right, you are setting yourself up for your own failure. All right, this is a clue of failure. Look around at your associations right now. Look at the people that you hang with. You're watching this right now. You might have somebody with you right now. Look at that person. Is that person making you better? Is that person making you smarter? Does that person compliment you? Does that person help you move forward in life? Is that person moving you backward? Is that person keeping you stagnant in the same spot? There's only one right answer to that question, which is moving forward. Stagnation is not 
are not a good thing. Stagnation is losing because the world is moving. So if you're stagnant, you're still losing. So look at your associations, the people you hang with, the people you talk to. Look at the call log in your phone. Look at the text message in your phone. Who the last 10 people you've been texting with? Look at your email. Who the last 10 people you send emails to? Are these people who make you better or are they people who are making you worse? When you choose the wrong associations and don't do anything about it, you are setting yourself up for failure. And many times in life, I'm also giving you a disclaimer, many times you will have chosen the wrong associations and not even realize that you've done it until it's too late. You do know you've done it, or maybe you won't know you did it. If you don't know, you might not know until it's too late. So you need to actively, consciously assess your associations. As I just gave you how to assess them. Look at the people around you and ask yourself, is this person making me better or is this person making me worse? If a person is making you better, you should be able to say how they're making you better. How is this person making me better? If you can't answer, all right, then maybe they're not making you better. All right, if someone makes you better, you should have ways of saying, you know what, I appreciate and value this person because, and then you can list out the ways that this person makes you better. It might be one way, it might be a thousand, but whatever it is, you should be able to say. If you can't say, maybe a problem with your associations. A lot of times in life, just like I said with the bad choices, we realize that we have bad associations. Like, damn, this person is not a good influence on me. This person doesn't have good energy. I don't think this guy or this girl is really going anywhere. But I'm st- And you just keep hanging with them, even though you realize that they're a bad association. All right, then you are causing your own failure. All right, you are precipitating your own failure in life when you realize that someone is a bad connection, but you still hang with them. You ignore it or you rationalize it. You start making up stories in your mind about why this person is okay or they just need some help or you're just trying to help them out or they just need someone to look at them positively and they'll get better. All right, that kind of mentality is going to lead you to failure in life. Now, again, don't say nobody told you. I'm telling you right now. So if you have someone around you who you know is going nowhere, but you keep hanging with them, what are you going to do? All right, someone, I'm going to que- answer all the questions at the end. So I see I got a question over on Facebook. I'll get to it at the end. Point number three. I mean, that was point number three. Point number four. Topic here today is failure leaves clues, volume one. Tomorrow I'm going to do volume two. Point number four, indecision. Indecision. Not making a decision. is making no decision. Some people call this procrastination. Someone once asked, I was at a meeting, somebody said, what's the most populated country in the world? And somebody said, uh, China. And then somebody said, the United States. He said, no, the most populated nation in the world is procrastination. Procrastination is when you act as if, falsely, as if you have unlimited time in life. That you can just get around to things whenever you get around to them. That you can just take your time and get the stuff whenever you want to get to it. You know, I don't need to do it right now. I can do it later. I don't, what's the rush? Well, why do we have to do it today? It's not immediate. We don't have to do it at this exact moment. These are kind of sayings that people make when they are coming up with reasons to not make a decision, to procrastinate, to add time to a decision, to add time to a process. And here's the thing. I completely understand and respect that sometimes in life we need to think about things, we need to consider our options, we need to look at every choice that we have, and that we need to make the right decision, right? We got to make smart decisions. Everything doesn't have to be a rush. But I want you to understand that there's a huge gap between rushing into rash decisions and procrastinating and being indecisive. And in between, you need to be somewhere in there. All right, you don't want to be at the end of being indecisive where you don't do anything because you have to analyze everything and you take forever to analyze just so you don't have to make a decision. But you also don't want to be rash and just do things without thinking. Okay, but a lot of people tend to get on the end of doing absolutely nothing out of their fear of making the wrong decision. Here's the problem in life with having a fear of making the wrong decision. The worst decision you can make is no decision because then nothing's going to happen in your life and you're going to be sitting around with a whole bunch of nothingness and wondering what could have been. All right, you don't want to be the person wondering what could have been in your life. All right, you want to be the person who did something. Even if you make a mistake, you learn from the mistake and you can adjust. But indecision is a mistake that you don't want to make in life. All right, this fly been flying around the whole time. I just got it. Now, people who cannot decide in life, when you can't make a decision, here's also what you can't do. You can't take action when you don't make a decision. And if you don't take action, how are you going to produce a result? Now, that's impossible, right? How can you, make, how can you produce a result in life if you never take action? And how can you take action if you don't make a decision? And if you don't make a choice, there's no way you can take action. So this is why you have to, you have to cure yourself of this habit of indecision because there's no way you can do something. You can't execute a strategy if you don't have a plan. You can't make a plan if you don't make a decision. So this is why you have to cure yourself of indecision. Successful people, let me tell you what successful people do. So I'm going to give you a framework here, very quick one. They make decisions faster and more definitively than failures. I'm going to say that again. Successful people make decisions faster 
and more definitively than failure. So when a successful person makes a decision, they do not waver on their decision. But once they make it, they move on it. Unsuccessful people take forever to even make a decision if they ever make one. And then as soon as they make a decision, they immediately change their mind and change their mind again and change their mind again. And it's hard to follow an unsuccessful person because they don't even know where they're going. How are you going to follow somebody and they don't know where they're going? All right, it's impossible, right? It's a trick question. So make yourself a person of success by being a person of decision. Successful people decide fast. Think of the most successful person you know. When they have a decision in front of them, when they got a question that needs to be answered, when they have a choice to make, they usually decide quickly. And once they have made a decision, they are definitive about it. Like, this is where I'm going. This is the option I'm taking. This is the direction that I'm going. If you want to go with me, cool. If you don't want to go with me, that's also cool. But this is what I'm doing. Again, you can take time to think, take time to consider, weigh your options. But when it's time to make a decision, you must move. All right. All successful people make decisions. And whatever decision you make, let me tell you something else about decision making. Because sometimes people say, well, Dre, it's hard for me to make decisions because I don't want to make the wrong decision and then realize later on that I made the wrong decision. Well, let me tell you something. Every decision that you make is the best possible decision that you could have made. Now, how do I know that? Because if there was a better decision, you would have made that one. Everybody follow what I just said. Every decision you make is the best one you could have made because if there was a better decision out there, you would have made that decision. But since you made this one, this obviously was the best decision. And if you get down the line and you realize, okay, maybe this wasn't the best decision, maybe there's a better option out there, then you can definitively pivot and go in the direction that you need to go in. Again, you get on the train and it's going southbound and you realize I need to go northbound. What are you going to do? You're going to get off the train, go to the other side of the platform, and you're going to get on the train that's going northbound. So if you realize that you made the wrong decision, be definitive about knowing why you made the wrong decision and then be decisive about changing it and going in the right direction. That's all you got to do. People who fail in life are incapable of doing this. They make the wrong decision, know they made the wrong decision, then they just sit around doing nothing. Don't be that. So these are the first four things of first four clues of failure. Failure leaving clues. I'm going to recap these in a minute. Let me tell you real quick about these books, then I'm going to recap and take questions. MirrorMotivation.com, The Self Guide to Self Discipline. This book is free. All you got to do is pay for the shipping. This is your entry book. You, don't, you know I've written 27 books. You don't know which one to read first. Get this one. MirrorOfMotivation.com. You ain't got to pay for the book. Just pay for the shipping. MirrorMotivation.com. Got you. Balloverseas.com. You want to play basketball overseas. This is the blueprint. This is the guidebook to tell you everything you need to do, everywhere you need to go, and what not to do if you want to play professional basketball worldwide. Balloverseas.com. The book's paid for. You take care of the shipping. Balloverseas.com. Now, the four clues that failure leaves. The first four clues of failure. Number one, lack of discipline. Happens to anyone who cannot show up every single day and do your work, mind your business, and stay focused. Number two, bad choices to go unfixed. Choosing wisely is the, one of the most important habits of success in life. A lot of people are incapable of making choices, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But also, once they make a bad choice, they realize it's the wrong choice, they don't do anything about it. They just leave it there, knowing that it's the wrong choice, but do nothing. You realize you got the wrong friends, you realize you went to the wrong school, you took the wrong job, you hired the wrong person, but you don't do anything. All right, that is a failure. Point number three, Poor associations. The law of association says you become the average of the people you spend the most time with. When you realize you're hanging around a loser or a failure or someone who is taking you backwards, what do you do about it? Do you do nothing? Do you rationalize it? Do you act like it's not happening? Do you ignore it? Do you keep tolerating this loser? Or what are you going to do? If you hang around losers, you're going to become a loser. You hang around success, you're going to become success. What is your, who are your associations? Look at the people you're hanging with. I guarantee you they will look at, they will show you clearly who you are on your way to becoming. And point number four, indecision. People who cannot decide cannot take action, and when you cannot take action, you cannot achieve. It makes it does it's scientifically impossible to achieve something by doing nothing in all of life in aggregate. You must make choices, you must make decisions, and you must take actions on them. If you cannot move yourself to make a decision, it's impossible to take action, it's impossible to succeed, nobody's gonna know your name, you're gonna die of failure. Remember that whatever decision that you make also is the best decision that you could have made because if there was a better decision to make, you would have made that one. Now, let me take any questions that we got. In the comments section, if you got a question, go ahead and post it in the comments. I'm going to address it right now. Aaron over on Facebook says, what if you don't have a lot of people? A lot of people for what? I don't know what you mean, what if you don't have a lot of people? If you're talking about the law of association, you can associate with people through the internet. So you could be on, you could be on the internet and associate with people. As I talked about, I don't know if you heard everything that I said here, but you can watch the replay. You can associate with somebody by reading their book. If you read, if somebody's written 10 books and you buy all 10 and you just read all of those books over the next 10 weeks 
Is that person one of your associates? Absolutely, because everything they said, you are putting it into your system. You're reading it. You're taking it in. If somebody puts out an album and you listen to that album and nothing else for a week straight, is that person one of your associates? Absolutely, they are, because everything they're saying, you're pumping that into your brain all day long because you're listening to it over and over again. If somebody has a podcast, if you watch somebody's YouTube and you're just consuming everything that they put out, they become one of your associations. There are plenty of people at work on your game university. They we've never met in person, but they're one of my I'm one of their associations because they're listening to my voice all day. Not all day, but every day they're hearing me. They're hearing my messages. They're hearing the, the phrases that I use all the time. They're hearing these principles that I'm sharing all the time. Now, there's a whole lot of different ones, but some of them are there's some similarities. I'm going to go over over and over and over again. I become one of their associations. So they got to choose and look at me and say, hey, is Dre making me better or is Dre making me worse? And you got to make good choices about the decisions that you are making. Aaron said, you got the super you. Oh, shout out to everybody who got that super you. Very impactful book. That's what's up. Shout out to everybody who read that super you. You said you want to get the mindset bundle next. I think you're talking about the bulletproof bundle. I think you're talking about the bulletproof bundle. So I'll be at bulletproofbundle.com. You might as well just get, go to mirrormotivation.com and just get the bulletproof bundle because it's this and two other books and the super you is one of them. So now you're going to have a super you twice or you can go to bulletproofbundle.com. The bulletproof bundle is four books. Somebody got a question, go ahead, post it in the comments. I'm scrolling through right now. Jarvis, D3 player from Naperville, North Central College. Shout out to, say, shout out to Naperville. Shout out to Anthony Parker. Jarvis Ware, D3. Shout out to the D3 ball players out there making it happen. Saleh said, I'm planning to go to college to play basketball, focus on academics, and sleep eight hours a night. How can I fit all this into a daily schedule? Well, it's 24 hours in a day. You only claimed, you only said something about eight of them. So you got 16 left to do academics and play basketball. I think you can make that work. Mathematically speaking, it makes sense to me. Charlie said, if you are not the leader or the boss, how do you become the leader or the boss or stay there? I would suggest you go to work in your game university where I have about 30 master classes on leadership and being in charge. If you want to learn, work on your game, you.com. The link is right there. If you want to be a leader or a boss, I mean, it's, that's not a 30 second answer. So again, I, I give you 30 minute master classes explaining exactly how it's done, why it's done, how to do it, and how to apply it right now from any position. If you really want to know, Charlie Robbins, work on your game university. And oh yeah, your first two weeks at university are free. All right, no tuition. <laughs> All right, the first two weeks, tuition is waived. And if you want to stay in the university, then you can pay. But if you want to leave, you can leave. But the first two weeks, no matter what you get in that first two weeks, you can take in as much or as little as you want. The tuition is waived. Work on your game, university.com. Let's work on your game, you. I didn't get university. University is too long. Work on your game, you.com. Work on your game, the book. Charlie, you can start with this as well. This is where I took my best material from my whole philosophy and condensed it down to 250 pages. The reason I condensed it to 250 pages is because the publisher said that's the size that they wanted. And they dropped the bag, so I gave them a 250-page book. That's this one right here. You can get this at workonyourgamebook.com. Workonyourgamebook.com. That's the book, Work On Your Game. When you get this book, this hardcover book, while you're waiting for this to come in the mail, we got about three or four of them we shipped out yesterday. We're going to give you over $1,200 in immediate digital bonuses right now today. So you had the digital bonuses to access right now on your phone, your computer, whatever, while you wait for the book to come in the mail. Again, that's workonyourgamebook.com. So anybody else got a question, I'll wait like 15 seconds to see if I get another question. I'll tell you about these books one more time. Mirrormotivation.com. The book is free. All you do is pay for the shipping. So this is where you start. If you've never heard of me, you just want to get started and see what I'm about. You, are, you just found out on this live. Now, go to mirrorupmotivation.com. Now, balloverseas.com. This is for anyone who wants to play basketball professionally. So this ain't for everybody. Only for the ball players who want to play professionally. Balloverseas.com. The book is free. You pay for the shipping. Yeah, Aaron. So you just get that, get that second copy of the Super U. Give it, to, give it to one of your friends as a gift. All right. Tell them you was thinking about them and you gave them that as a gift. So the Super U is part of the Bulletproof Bundle. I don't know how you didn't know that, but now you know. Just give it to somebody as a gift. All right, if it changed your life, it could change somebody else's life. So, all right, that's the law of karma working for you. You give good karma to somebody else by giving them that book, good karma is going to come back to you. So, and again, when you get the mirror motivation, you can get the bundle. Then we're going to offer you uh, another bundle where you can get this and my book, The Mental Workbook, which I showed in my story yesterday. And then we're going to offer you uh, the Bulletproof Mindset and the 30 Days of Discipline manuals those aren't just books those are manuals because i took a whole course and i put it into a book two of them 30 days of discipline and bulletproof mindset bulletproof mindset is like 300 pages <laughs> the book's pretty heavy so we had to we had to get extra big envelopes just to mail that thing out 
Somebody said, any advice on how to cold approach women? I got a course called Get the Girl, Augusta J. I think that'd be the perfect place to start. That's at workonmygame.com slash girl. I think we got the, I don't think it's open right now. We actually going to do the same thing we did with 30 Days of Discipline and Bulletproof Mindset. Augusta, Augusta we're going to make that into a manual. So we're going to take that course, the Get the Girl course, and we're going to make it into a, a physical manual. And then you can just buy the manual. So everybody, again, work on your game university. That's where you get daily master classes on any of these topics. People ask me about how to approach women, how to be a leadership, all of that stuff. Boom, you get that at, what is that? WorkingTheGameUniversity.com. Savage Fitness said the books just came in. That's what's up. Shout out to everybody who has ordered the books. I just told y'all where to get them. MirrorMotivation.com, BallOversees.com, WorkingTheGameBook.com. Those are three places to get the books, and we're going to give you options to get other stuff right there on the spot. And I think we have one more uh, book. Uh, Savage Fitness, I think we have one more book we had to send out to you. We were waiting for it to come in, but that came in, so we got that shipment on its way. I believe... If, if you are who I think you are, I think we just sent one out to you today. So everybody, I'm doing this live again tomorrow, unless otherwise noted. Sometimes Saturday we move the time around, but unless otherwise noted, it will be tomorrow at some point in the day. So just follow my story right here at Dre Baldwin on Instagram, slash work on your game on Facebook. Everyone work on your game. Y'all know where to get the books. Let's do it. We out of here. Have a great Friday. Work on your game.